Okay, well, uh, we are going to start. And welcome all to the 48th episode of the STEM Girls Virtual Free Talk Show. We are really happy and glad to have you here. I'm really glad to be here too. Thank you so much, madam. Um, well, uh, to start formally, I will start reading the next introduction. Women, as we know, are no less than any men in any field. Over time, we have seen several examples of women excelling in various STEM fields and serving the society for the larger cause. We at the STEM Girls Initiative aim to groom girls with the same kind of inspiration and feel hard to excel in STEM fields and do their best. This talk show is the platform for the women in STEM to talk to the girls aspiring to excel in it. We are sure that after hearing from our guests, all the audience will be inspired to reach the start. During this talk show, we will be conversing with a woman in the field of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. A woman who has made her mark and now graciously taking the time to tell us about her journey and share with us her wisdom. So, I will start by introducing our guest today. Our guest today is Dr. Erum Sariev Moni. Erum is a medical doctor from the King Edward Medical University with Masters in Public Health from UHS, Pakistan. 16 years worth of community work experience in reproductive health, public health, and quality assurance. She is currently employed as a de deputy director of academic quality assurance at National University of Medical Sciences. As quality practi practitioner, she strives to ensure that her institution can guarantee with confidence and certainty that the stance of its educational provision are being maintained and enhanced. She has also worked in reproductive health, emergency medical obstetric care, as well as family planning and post-abortion care services. She is internationally certified with family planning and post-abortion care trainer of trainers. Nairobi, Kenya, certified minimal initial service package trainer and Irka, UK, and um, CKE, can I, Canada Certified Lead Auditor, QMS 9001-2015. For last five and a half years, she has been working as quality assurance professional at NOMS. She developed the quality assurance doctorate at the new university. And well, thank you so much, Madam, for being here. We really appreciate that you took a little bit of your time to, to share your wisdom with us. I'm really honored to be with you guys because uh, I'm a mother of three girls and uh, they're very aspiring uh, young girls who really want to reach the stars. So I'm ready to meet more. Thank you so much, Madam. And well, um, if you want, you can present yourself, introduce yourself, and then I can start with the question, or if you okay. want to say anything more. I uh, just want to introduce myself to you guys. Uh, you've given a very gracious introduction of myself. Actually, uh, I'm a medical doctor, as you said, but I pursued my career in public health. Uh, from public health, I went into quality assurance because that's how you progress one by one to a higher degree and higher position. So at the moment, I'm working as Deputy Director Quality Assurance at, at National University of Medical Sciences. And I not only teach medical students, but I teach postgraduate students on public health and quality assurance. And I help develop medical curricula, you know, the, their coursework for improvement and we are really working hard to make it better every day. Thank you. Thank you so much, doctor. And well, now it is time to start with the questions. Sure. And well, the first question that we have is, what is your field of study and what got you interested in it? And who has inspired you the most to become who you are today? Uh, you know, in the third world countries, 
uh, both in Asia and Africa, women do not have much opportunity to progress and get themselves educated. But I was uh, lucky enough to be born as the only child to my parents. And uh, they were really inspiring to me. As a child, I, they told me how to ask questions, feel confident about what I wanted to do, and go into the research of what, how, when, why. These are the basic questions that you need to ask to find out which is going to be your, your pathway in the next few years and your lifetime. So this is, my dad was the most inspiring person for me who actually led the way. He was uh, very, very well read. Uh, although he, was, he belonged to the journalism community and we lived in Saudi Arabia for a lot of time because he was employed there. He actually sent me to Pakistan to pursue my education in the medical industry. So moving from a, for, from a father's point of view and from a mother's point of view, it was a great deal that I had to move from one country to another to pursue my career. My mother was another uh, very inspiring person. And she actually uh, paved the way for my public health path that I have pursued in life. She was a big philanthropist. She, would, uh, she was not an NGO by definition, so she never joined an NGO formally, but she has helped out so many people around the world, not only in her own country, but in countries uh, other than her own as well. Wherever she lived, we used to move a lot, and she used to be there for everybody helping girls boys families to sustain and then help helping them understand what life is and maybe help them change their perspective towards girls education so i come from a background of people both my parents who were really into girls education and respected girls as much as they respected the male members of the family Thank you so much, madam, for sharing that with us. I'm very happy to hear that. Uh, it is very important to know how to ask questions. Many, many people don't know, and it's, I don't know, like, it's a little bit difficult to, to search for somebody to, to, to ask our questions. So thank you so much for sharing that with us. And now, uh, another question very important uh, is, the, if there was anything, situation or challenge you had to overcome in pursuing a career, a career as, a, as a doctor, um, or what experiences have prepared you into working with, with your field of work? Um, life is full of challenges. You know, when you start off life, you think it's going to be a bed of roses. It's not really. When you're with your parents, when you're in your own, you know, shell, protected by people around you who love you, the, the whole story is different. But as you progress, you move on. As I told you, I had to move out of my country where I was living in Saudi Arabia, had to come to Pakistan to join my medical school. It was the first biggest challenge. And even before that, as I said, Continuous good education, good grades are required to eventually reach to a professional college. So I had to really struggle hard because uh, in, in Saudi Arabia, there were no tuitions, no people who could help you out in additional hours. So whatever I had to learn, I had to learn from my class teachers who were teaching me in my school. So that was the biggest challenge for me and my dad, as I said, was from a journalism um, uh, perspective and I was a science student. So he couldn't really tell me anything about biology, chemistry, physics. So the first hurdle was how to get so many good marks to actually reach to a medical college. When I finally made it through and I was selected on a merit uh, in the King Edward Medical College, which is the topmost in our uh, in Pakistan, I came here. The other challenge was living alone, because I had to live in a hostel, 
and hostile when it, it is uh, coming out of your home. There are more challenges of survival than just education. So protecting yourself, feeding yourself, maintaining yourself is the biggest task for girls who are living out of their houses. So that was my another challenge that I successfully met. I don't know how successfully, but I struggled a lot in the initial area. But then by the time I was in my fourth year and final year, I had made good group of friends, good networking. I would suggest to all little girls listening to me maybe, that you know you need to develop you need to have a circle of people who think like you or maybe are aspiring to be somebody like you so you can have a good network people who can help and support each other through the way of education and then job and then excelling is very very important it is very difficult for people especially girls to excel in a hostile situation. We all know that being girls, there are so many issues of harassment. There are so many issues when you're you know, out of your home and you have to do things on your own. There could be financial issues. There could be safety issues. There could be so many other issues. So in that regard, people have to be confident about themselves, really focused on their goals. Unless you do that, you will not be able to reach your goals. So I faced all these challenges of being a female, living in another country. There was weather change, there was climate change, there was too much hot, uh, you know, it, it, it's really, really hot in Pakistan. Although it was hot in Saudi Arabia, but we had air conditioners all over. So I had to pursue my professional education with a lot of dedication, a lot of problems that were there, being a girl, as I said, living uh, in an independent situation in a country was very hard. But I made through that. Finally, I became a medical doctor, but then getting job of your choice was another challenge that I faced. And then there is a lot of competition between males and females. Unfortunately, world over we see that males get preference, maybe because of the area, maybe because of the hardships that are there. So getting the job of my choice took me a few years of struggle. And finally, I got to work in the reproductive healthcare and then public health, which was my initial passion. And that's how my small little journey continued. And it is continuing even now. Thank you so much, Doctor. That motivates me a lot. I hope that all the girls that are watching this video feel the same as me, because I also have to to move from my my home to another city to to continue my studies. Okay. And I understand that part. It's very difficult to to live in life in a independent way because mm -hmm. you are used to to be with your parents, with your family, with your friends. And now, well, you are in a in a different city, in a different context, and I'm very happy to hear that you do overcome that that challenge. It it goes away, really. I trust trust me. Once you know, if you're move, if you're focused at your goal of achieving your goal, small little things, small little hurdles don't matter, and you eventually overcome them, and you eventually achieve your target. Uh, the only thing is that, you know, uh, being girls, I would advise everybody that, you know, once you're a hostelite, you're always a hostelite. So my heart goes out to all those girls living in hostels, pursuing their education, working hard to achieve their goals. I want to tell all of you that, you know, safety is most important thing that should never be compromised over anything else. If you're safe, if you're healthy, you know, when you're safe, you have to be physically safe, you have to be socially safe, you have to be mentally safe, right? And you have to have a physical health as well. So all these, when they're put together, only then can you fight the challenges of achieving good, going up high, getting good grades. And good grades do not mean that you have to talk top the list every time. You can maintain your good grades 
and still be reasonably good and a high achiever in your life. Persistence is more important than hitting the sky. You know, if you go slow and steady, you keep yourself safe, you keep yourself healthy, and you maintain your grades and don't get too stressed. You know, stress comes with for people who are living out of their homes, who are pursuing higher education because this is a cutthroat situation. People are working very hard, you know, and you need to, you need to, uh, come at a level to fight with all that. But then, as I said, if you're geared up right, and if you're healthy, if you're, if you're safe, if you're feeling this, this environment is safe and is going to help my potential to build, that's what you need really. So for potential, for students, for girls or boys to flourish, you have to have that enabling environment. When I say the enabling environment, it means it has to be safe. It has to be protected, protective. It has to be giving you opportunities to learn and provide you equal opportunity. Thank you so much, Doctor. That is a very like important advice because sometimes that we have different situations, uh, we forgot to to be focus on our health and our safety. So thank you so much for that advice. You're most welcome. And now that we are talking about different problems that, that girls have when they have when they are studying or working, which social problem do you think is more urgent to be solved when we talk about girls in STEM? Uh, you know, anything can bog down your plans. If you're not physically fit, if you encountered some disease because you were very reluctant, maybe it was too cold and you decided to go out, hang out with your friends and you lost that time. You know, if you get sick near your time of examination, you are going to lose. So planning is the key to success. You do things, you go out with your friends, you have good time, you party, because that's what student life is all about. That's what we are all looking at when we go to universities and, you know, especially universities abroad, out of your own comfort zone when nobody is looking, no relatives to comment on you, what the hell were you doing with over there? And, but then you are the self-guard as well, right? You have to have that self-control that if I plan to stay out for four hours, two hours, whatever, and then I have to catch up with my studies. I need to have that backup plan if there, there's something good, something might go wrong and then I have to fix it and bring my plan or my studies to the track. With science subjects, be it engineering, be it medicine, you know, and then postgraduate uh, education. You cannot just party all the time. You have to, pass those exams, you have to go through those mids, those quizzes, those practicals. And once, if you miss out on your, uh, you know, hours of study, you might not even get admission to or ability to sit in the exams. So you've got to plan it first, go stepwise. And if you somehow, maybe for some unknown reason, you lost some time of your study, you need to make it up. You know, you have to be focused and you stay at your path and you continue step by step to reach your goal. Because if you get, you know, if you fail in your one exam and then you're going to sit for a supplementary exam and then you have another class to sit and you have another uh, subject to learn and while you are studying for the previous exam, trying to clear, clear your previous exams, that can be a lot of stress for you guys. Peer pressure in science subjects is the killer. Majority of the students who God forbid either leave their studies or get sick or even God forbid commit suicide or stuff like that or get into addiction is because of the extreme peer pressure and stress of studies that they face. So you need to be mentally prepared. You need to get into a group of people 
who are excelling and who are ready to help you excel as well. So if you fall uh, prey to people who are partying all the time, people who are not serious about their studies, people or groups where there is, you know, addiction going on, a lot of alcohol, things like that, you won't be able to keep up with your studies. So for science students, or be it any kind of science studies, you know, you need to stay focused and you keep the hours, the credit hours that you have to complete, you have to complete in time and there is no looking back. It's not that you can do it every year and come back and then again appear for the exam and fail and again come back. This is not the possibility if you really want to have a steady path to your success. Thank you so much for that, Doctor. That is a very important advice also. Um, and we are very glad to have you here so you can share with us what you know, your experience, because I think that there is no better advice than the one who com that comes from, from someone own own experience. So exactly. thank you so much for that. And now uh, we will pass to some questions more related to your field of work. And the right. next question is, what are the main components in reproductive health of humans? Are they a skills required to be a reproductive health personnel? And is any share with us, with our girls? Uh, you know, as far as we're talking about girls, you know, we are already talking about reproductive health, right? As I said, if you need to stay healthy mentally, physically, you will be on your path of a good education and everything. Reproductive health is the most important health of a woman's body because it's, reproductive health doesn't, even, doesn't, doesn't start when you go into a pregnancy. It starts from your childhood or maybe the pregnancy of your mom. While you're inside the mother's womb, that's where your reproductive cycle starts. Right? When you're in the womb, that's the time when you get good nutrition. If your mother is stress free, you get good potential environment to survive and come out as a healthy baby. If your mother is all immunized from all basic diseases, you are going to be better off as a, as a born baby. You're going to have good weight. You're going to have mental stability, right? So the life cycle or the reproductive cycle starts from the womb of the mother. Then you come out, you grow as girls. And nutritional deficiencies are the most prevalent deficiencies that women face while they're in the growing up or, or adolescent ages of uh, their reproductive cycle. So in the second component of reproductive cycle is your adolescence or your growing up where all, a lot of hormones are going to be pouring in. A lot of physical changes are going to occur in you. A lot of things that might make you feel ashamed, embarrassed, having your first period. The menarche is the time. You know, menarche is when you have your first period. And before the, having the first period, you need to have that sex education, education about how to protect yourself, how to be safe. You know, when you want to have things, you should have things. But if you want to keep yourself safe, or maybe have family planning at hand, you should know what are the possibilities and what is the access to all those things that you can have to prevent a pregnancy and how to stay safe so that you can complete your education and move ahead with your life. Because unwanted things, when they happen, I love your slogan, you know, about the belly thing. <laughs> it's really interesting. So it should be a choice, not a, not a chance or not a compulsion that is brought on to you. So for uh, the reproductive cycle, as far as the reproductive uh, health is concerned, the components of reproduction are 
the, the life cycle is infancy and childhood, that is from year zero to year nine. And during this time, you know, as I said, when you're in the womb of your mother, things that can go wrong is infanticide, you know, uh, feticide when people decide not to have children only because they are female. This is one big issue that female gender faces. But if you're good to come out, then you might be facing problems like, uh, you know, gentle mutilation and stuff like that. A lot of discrimination in nutrition of girls is faced in this world. Then the age period from, of adolescence, 10 to 19 years, this is crucial period for growth. This is the time when the girl or the boy has to nurture into a healthy, physically, mentally healthy human being. This is the time when most of the psychological stresses, either they're prevented and you grow up, up to a physically healthy person, uh, psychologically healthy person, or these are the times when you go through a lot of stress and you could end up into maybe child marriage, abortion, contracting infections, you know, child abuse of some sort, God forbid, all these things can go wrong. So we're talking, we've talking about, talked about two ages. One is infancy and childhood, and then adolescence. And the, then comes the reproductive period, I was, as I was talking to you about a menarche. From 15 years of your life to 45 years and plus of your life, when you're sexually able to reproduce and have children is the time which is called the reproductive period. This is the time when most of the things are happening. This is the time when your education is at peak. This is the time your physical changes are at peak. This is the time when you're having your first period. This is the time when parents are thinking, let's get her married early so we have less people to feed in the family. This is the time when you are striving and trying to convince your parents that I want to go for secondary education, while somebody in the family might be pushing you back to getting married and having children early. Because that's the kind of society that we belong to most of the, in most of, of the third world countries that women have to get married very early so they can have children early and the life can progress like that. This period of reproductive age is very sensitive. From 15 to 45 years, you can contract. When you want to be healthy, you need to be healthy. You have to have optimum nutrition. You have to have most enabling environment. Things can really, really go wrong. You can be forced into a marriage. You can have an unplanned pregnancy. You can have sexually transmitted diseases, infertility. You can face malnutrition complications of infectious diseases as well. Then you could be forced into child raising or violence and abuse and so many other things. So this is the period from 40, 15 years to 45 years, which is the epitome of a woman's life where she has to perform literally everything. Maybe she's going for a postgraduate education and she gets pregnant or she wants to get pregnant because she is 35 now and she needs to have a baby. It's her right to have that. So at this point in time, keeping the balance of how you're going to maintain your family and your social life and your educational life and maybe take care of a baby at the same time is something that you need to really plan beforehand. The fourth period of life, which is related to reproductive health, is post-reproductive period. 45 plus and onwards really doesn't stop. This, this is not a hard and fast rule that menarche is going to start at 15 and end at 45. It could, this is just an average timeline. Menarche can happen in, at 12, 10, or maybe even earlier. Right, and the postmenopausal period, the, the the 
the time when your periods stop, this can be really extended to 55 years and plus. So this 15 to 45 of years of reproductive age are just an average time that is there for you to excel. Post-reproductive period has its own complications. Most importantly is physical ailments. When people have very fertile life, you know, from 40, 15 to 45, they've had, let's, let's say, produced 10 children or so. They are going to have deficiencies in there, not necessarily, but most of the time in our countries, that's what happens. They, they can contract uh, cardiovascular diseases, they can have malnutrition, they can have hormonal problems. So uh, menopause itself is a ch very challenging situation. By this time in females, mostly the chronic diseases set in. Things that were not taken care of, maybe not good calcium, not enough milk for the female in the beginning of her life can end up into osteoporosis at the end, setting in very early. And it could be disastrous. You can have uterine dysfunction. So you can have abnormal periods going on. You can have diabetes and whatnot. So uh, this, all these chronic diseases, they settle in uh, mostly from 45 years and onwards of your life. So this is a short uh, reproductive cycle introduction I could give you. Um, I hope I've made myself clear. Any questions on that? Uh, you're more than welcome. Thank you so much, doctor, because uh, as you said, uh, this is a very important uh, topic to, to talk about because uh, it is part of us and, and the most important thing that we have to be searching is our, our health and our health and, and our safety. And okay. Thank you so much. And the next question uh, is, how can we increase uh, young woman participation in your field of work? And what job and career opportunities are there for girls who are aspiring to study something relating also to your field? Uh, when I started off my studies, there were very limited fields available to women girls. Majority of my predecessors could only teach maybe, and that was one acceptable profession women had, right? So if you're teaching young children, that's fine. That's your, you're doing a fantastic job. But if you wanted to go into uh, jobs that were much more challenging, like public health, going into community, trying to make, bring in behavior change, those were big words at that time and not many people were ready to let their girls go for community work. Although they all wanted the benefits of community work, but they were not letting their children or especially their girls go to far off places and help those people in need. So as I said, I've been born in a, in a family where I was supported. When I, I got married really early, <laughs> Although I, I actually got married at the age of 25, just after finishing my medical school. But that's one thing that I was willing to do at that time, because I had done part of my house job and I was ready to go into the second half of my house job. House job is when you're doing an internship with a hospital. Uh, when I was working in, in the hospitals and when the government hospitals, be it in Africa or in Pakistan and all Southeast Asia, the situation is not that good. You end up going into public health. You end up going into take, you know, taking that extra step and telling that uh, pregnant woman who's pregnant for the fifth time in the hope of a boy to stop it. You have, you, you, they need counseling and you're ready as young a healthcare providers to provide that public health message to them. So, or maybe tell them ways to uh, avoid pregnancy because majority of the people do not have access to this information or access to the possible ways of family planning that are available. 
and end up into abortions or repeated pregnancies leading to hemoglobin of these reproductive women going from 12 to 4 milligrams per deciliter. And majority then die of bleeding after giving birth to children. So this counseling, this this passion of mine to counsel those people because I was working in gynae and obstetric department. I had a lot of opportunity to help those, to, those people understand. And that's how people, young girls can grow. When I was doing my medicine, medicine was the only way to public health, right? So it was a post-graduation degree on uh, when I had finished my MBBS. Now, things have changed. You can even go for a bachelor's degree in public health or nursing or pharmaceuticals and then end up into doing your master's in public health. Or you can become a community worker. You can become uh, what we have in our uh, healthcare setup called the lady health workers. People who go out, reach out in the community, and they are uh, literally messengers of God. <laughs> they, they, they tell people about how to prevent malaria, how to treat their child when they have diarrhea. They have family planning products on them that they can give out, which has been supplied by the government. They can refer people, finding out that this person might be having high blood pressure. This female who's pregnant appears to have high blood pressure and can end up uh, into fits. So they can do the referral and help those ladies or women out. Then there are counselors in the community that you can become. So there are so many other ways where the whole health care force is established. So don't have to actually be a medical doctor to do the public health work. You can join in as lady health workers. You can join in as nurses, as community nurses. So there are different levels of education and that's not very uh, expensive education. So not everybody is going to have that ample amount of money where you can do a four-year degree or a postgrad degree on top of that. So you, you can start off with very little education, do a little bit of community work under public health supervision, and then pursue your career when you have enough money, and then you can put it into your education and do a master's on top of that. I hope I've answered your question. Yes, thank you so much. And um, now uh, we will pass on our question. Thank you so much for your response, doctor. And uh, what would you consider to be your greatest achievement as a STEM woman? I think, you know, if you ask this question to a man, that what is your biggest achievement? He might tell you that I have become maybe a general in the army, or I have become the head of my organization, or I have achieved uh, these million dollars and worth these million dollars <laughs> as an asset. But for a woman, it's a different story. For a woman to be accomplished, you don't have to be only an accomplished doctor. You can't be a complete woman unless you're a good mother, unless you're a good wife, unless you're a good daughter, unless you're a reproductive member of your society. You are somebody that people feel safe around you and you're approachable. So people can, can come and ask you any question. So I believe that my biggest accomplishment at this point in time is one why two of my children are becoming doctors. One is taking her 12th grade exam right now. Uh, I have a family which is stable. I have a good job that I am actually pursuing and I am helping other children get that uh, potential 
all those skills to become one accomplished person. I would not say a woman or a man, uh, an accomplished person. So, so you have to have a mix of everything with you, not only your degrees, not only the money that you earn, not only the status that you have in your society. is something, the kindness of the heart is something that actually makes you somebody who's accomplished. Thank you. Thank you so much, madam. Uh, I think that it was a very like interesting talk show. Uh, I'm a little, I'm a lot motivated right, right now because you said very important things that sometimes we forget about. And now the next question, the, the last one is, now Nigeria is currently facing insecurity globally. What is your contribution to solving this problem with your field or what do you think is a possible solution? Um, I have actually, as, I, as you read through, I have been trained in uh, uh, some really beautiful places uh, of Africa. I've loved uh, going there, meeting people, getting to know, know human beings is what I do. Actually, my forte is getting to know people and finding out ways I can help them. One of the things that I am doing right now, talking to the girls of Nigeria, telling them how they can, you know, take it bit by bit, build up their life, build up their education and stand up on their own with security and good nutrition and good health around them is one contribution that I'm doing right now, that I'm talking to the girls who are going to be the future of Nigeria one day. I would like to get involved and engaged in any program that you may be doing in particular for adolescent health or any physical health that I can really, I would be honored to be part of that as well. So as far as I'm here in my country, what I'm doing is I'm uh, affiliated with so many NGOs that are working in different fields. Because I am a medical doctor, I'm associated with, associated with kidney care, with blood donation societies, with uh, education being my forte. And, and as I'm uh, a person working in the university, I do a lot of counseling. And I'm a focal person for anti-sexual harassment as well. So as I said, you know, you need to have that, that approachability where people can come up with their issues. And maybe if you're, I, I cannot help everybody, but what we can do is we can find out ways of them reaching the right place where they can get all that help. Thank you so much, Doctor. Uh, we appreciate a lot that you you shared with us your your advice, your experience, and all your knowledge about uh, this this topic that is important that is reproductive health. And before we start with the end of the talk, too, I don't know if you would like to to say something else, a conclusion, a last advice, uh, anything that you want to share. Um. Since I told you I'm a mother of three girls, I have a lot of advice to give to the whole lot of girls sitting outside. First, the first one being is stay safe, you know, stay healthy, stand up for your rights. Communication is the skill that opens so many doors for you, that if you're a good communicator, If you can ask somebody the right question, you know, you will get the right answer. If you cannot ask the right question, how do you expect somebody to give you the right answer? So think about what is right for you. As I said, plan ahead. Planning is most important if you're thinking of pursuing a professional career. Planning will not only be how to get the degree, but I said, as being a woman, there are multiple challenges. You have to have a family. You have to have children. You have to have a safe home for them. 
So you can't just go on uh, into another country and start studying, leaving your little children behind. So taking the whole family together and still managing to do what you wanted and achieving your passion is what a woman stands for. I would like to be a STEM girl and I would like all STEM girls to have this confidence in themselves, to, to plan ahead, to think positively, don't get stressed, don't get overwhelmed with peer pressure, stay at your path, and even at times when you have to take small breaks, do take them. There is nothing wrong with taking small breaks in your career or in your path. You can always resume. Do not think that once you've taken a break, you cannot go back. As I said, I've had children while I was studying, right? I've come back every time. I've, come, I've taken a break and I've come back every time. I've had hardships in life, you know, multiple problems. But to reach somewhere, you have to just be persistent. Persistence, good communication skills, clear-headedness, and hard work are the keys that will take you wherever you want to go. Thank you so much, Madam, again. Uh, I don't know what to say. I'm very happy to, <laughs> for being here to be the host today and, and share this space with you. So thank you so much. Thank you very much. I was really honored. And as I said, when you have something inside you, you know, your passion, girl, gender, you know, I work for gender. I work for gender equality. I work against sexual harassment. So uh, with all that in mind, you know, you know, girls are at, at the core of my heart and I'm ready to do anything, uh, anytime for you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. Now I will pass to the next slide and now we are going to, here's a quote uh, that we read almost on every talk show that says, the word female when inserted in front of something is always with an auto surprise. Female CEO, female pilot, female surgeon, as if the gender implies surprise. One day they won't be female leaders, they will just be leaders. And I, think, I think that is something very important because as, a, as, as people, uh, we have a lot of value, no, not only for, for our gender. So, uh, this show uh, was hosted by African Girls Empowerment Network or H Network. Here are the focus area focus areas where we work and this show is part of a network STEM Girls Initiative that is the Girls Education Focus Area. Uh, here is our mission that is about inspire, connect, and answer. Uh, all the questions that girls have regarding this kind of topic. Uh, this is some information so how can girls can get involved. Uh, they can become STEM girls that are the girls who participate in our talk shows, our Zoom meets, or all the events that we are preparing for us, for you, to the people who, who is watching this. Uh, you can also become a mentor volunteer. So if you're interested, doctor, you can send us a message. We will start with a new program where we want to ask, to, to continue uh, answering the questions that girls have. Uh, we want to mentor girls so they can have like a, a more planned path to, to, to follow uh, if they want to continue with a professional career. Uh, also, the people who is watching this can become a partner friend uh, so we can promote more our, our, our program, our initiative. Uh, they can also become donors or even ambassadors. So here's some of the ways uh, people can stay connected. So if someone have any question or comment, you can send us an email or a message to any of these uh, social uh, media. So thank you so much everyone for participating. Uh, we are very happy and we hope to see you next talk. So thank you so much again, doctor. And I hope you, all have a wonderful day today. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much, Jato. Thank you very much. Yeah, um, um, I just want to say we've learned a lot from what you shared so far. And um, 
we'll be glad if we can have you join us. We're having a live chat today also on health. If you can join the live chat, it'll be nice. We'll share with you the link to join. So I believe our girls will be very well prepared to talk, um, to hear from you. I'd, I'd be uh, really delighted if I can possibly reach out to as many girls as, as I possibly can, maybe answer a few questions, because girls are really, really reluctant in asking questions. As I said to you girls earlier, you need to know what you want to ask and then be open about it. So don't keep it in your heart. Ask people. People might be there to help you out. And I'm definitely one of them. So you can even uh, reach me out whenever you have uh, a question, any any uh, talk or any specific or specified health-related or public health-related issue that you want to discuss with me. Uh, I actually deal with the legal issues of uh, anti-sexual harassment as well in my country and in my university. As I said, I'm a focal person. So I, I can actually... Uh, talk to girls about so many things in life. Wow. Thank you so much, Ma. Thank, Thank you. So Thank you very much, much yeah. for having me. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye. 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 Yeah, I will, I will also share with you a mentoring program uh, link so you could join a, a WhatsApp group also. All right. Thank you. All right. Bye. Thank you. Enjoy the Bye -bye. rest of the day. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.